okay, now I can reply. Um, so I have two options here. I can go with I'm ho I can I will help you or I'm sorry. Uh, there's no third option here. Uh, I would highly recommend that you say that you help them. That's that's just me. Like I said, you will be rewarded. You will be compensated, which means money. And I could always use money, so I'm gonna help. And we have sent the reply, which gives us our seventh email, uh, where she says that she will help. And we are done with the email system yet again. So now we can head the way that we were going before through the double doors. And the double double doors, the quadruple doors. Let's head through. And now we can head right on through here. I knew I was, I was forgetting something. These emails, they can be kind of tricky if you want to get them all. But hopefully I will be able to get all of them and let you know when I make... What, what I do to make that happen. That one, you have to go back into the reality room, obviously. You're looking cute as usual. Why is everybody hit on me? Hello, Mr. Holgar. You're kind of creepy. Hey, now, quit with the formalities. Call me Mr. Driller. You're not helping any, Mr. Holgar. D -d -d Driller? D did you say now? Even Xion's getting a little uncomfortable now. I'm really skilled at using the drill crane. Oh, okay. So much so, I wish the drill council would acknowledge it. Of course, Susumu Hori and I are equals when it comes to drilling. Of course, Susumu Hori is the best, I think. Don't ever confuse me for a run-of-the-mill drill worker. I won't, Mr. Driller. Yeah, yeah she doesn't. I don't want to call him Mr. Driller. What, Mr. Holgar? Ah, oh, crap, Mr. Driller? What is it, Chion? I have to go through there. That doesn't matter at all right now. A clumsy worker caused an accident and they can't work because the wreckage is in the way. That's where my drill cane and I come in. But even with an awesome driller like me, this is one heck of a job for just one guy. It's tough. Real tough for just one guy. That's where you, my cute little Xion, come into the picture. This is creepier and creepier as we go along. You've answered my drill call! <laughs> oh god. Did he say drill call? How am I not supposed to take that sexually? Am I right? I'm right, aren't I? You'll do it, won't you? You'll help my noble cause, won't you? Uh, yeah, I do have a bad feeling about this, but I do know where this is going, so I do want to give it a try. I'll give it a try, but I may not be able to fully appreciate drilling like you do. Yeah, you'll take over my drill then. Okay, first I'll teach you how to operate the drill crane. Listen closely, operating a drill is not about reflexes or clever techniques. It's all about heart soul within. Passion for your drill will allow you to operate the drill as you wish. He, yes, this guy has, has lost it. Now I'll show you how to operate the drill. Listen carefully and get this all down, okay? First I'll s explain vertical movement. If you press the square button, just break that fourth wall, why don't you? The drill will start moving vertically. If you do, if you let go, the drill will stop right at that spot. If you keep pressing the button, the the drill will stop once it's reached the end of the rail. For moving the drill, you can move the camera freely using the left analog stick. You can also switch between cameras using the R2 button. You'll need to switch cameras to determine the drill's precise location, so be sure to make good use of them. Moving the drill is a one-shot deal. Operate the buttons carefully. When you're done moving vertically, you'll then move the crane horizontally, switch cameras using the R2 button, and use the square button to move the drill just like you did when moving the crane vertically. Of course this is a one shot deal that you can't do over. When you're done moving vertically and horizontally the drill will do the work on its own. The drill will come down and destroy anything under it. Obviously nothing will happen if nothing's there. If you miss you can always do it over again. And if you want to quit the crane will stop if you press the X button. That's everything you need to know about the drill. Well what do you think? Simple right? Yeah, I got it. I think. I can't remember if I have to hold it or if I just tap it and, and press it twice. I think I have to. I think I have to hold it. I don't want to listen to it again, though. Okay, so here's the camera. Um, we want to move it. Um, God, yeah, vertically. There we go. It looks like I have to hold it the first time and then tap it the second time. Okay, so I got one down. Oh, no, I press it twice? Okay. 
Fair enough. That is lined up, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm heading for the big stuff first, obviously. There we go. There's number two. Let's do it from here. Ah, uh, I might have missed it. Well, I still get it. Yeah, I still got it. Kind of. It was off center, but I got it. Okay, now head for this one. And blow that shit up. That's right on the money. Yeah, blow up that TV. Now, all the way to the end. What's the other one? Oh. Well, this works real nice. He's playing on use this one. There we go. Perfect. Good enough. And for that, I should get the good reward for that. At a girl, Shion, you really understand the soul of the drill. Sure. All on target. At this rate, you could take over my job anytime. And we get a drill passport so we actually could take over his job whenever we want. Thanks. Just a little thank you for showing me what a true driller is all about. Take this item with you too, and we get a medkit S for not missing, which is, uh, yeah. You can keep going. I, th I don't think you're limited to just five tries, so if you miss, uh, one of the times you just get a regular medkit once you are done, but by doing it all perfectly, we get a medkit S. How you doing, buddy? High traffic area for work carts. There, oh, cargo's being moved overhead by wires. I just can't see it. And yeah, that there was an accident here. And we got another email. This one is required. I don't have a choice. I have to read it. And we, oh, starting the database service. I have already gone over the database a little bit. I forgot that you actually needed an email in order to actually get that started. Um, apparently I specified Gnosis and Keyword for, as categories for your save data. Um, I don't remember doing that, but that is nice anyway. I, I think that's done. Yeah, that's done automatically. What am I talking about? Of course it is. Uh, plugins are devices that may be attached to the connection gear to add new functions to it. The database plugin will automatically be saved when this email is sent. So in other words, I don't need to do anything. Later on, I might actually need to do something. So now we can go through the UMN database, and now we can find keywords and gnosis there. Very nice. So, let's go back. I'm sure the bunny wants to talk about the database. It does. The fact that you received email from the Omegabyte store must mean you'll be able to use the UMN database in the near future, as in now. Very perceptive, bunny. By the way, why did you select keyword in Gnosis as your databases? Yeah, this is not something that you can control, but it is very useful, as you can see. You have a reason, don't you? Of course! The reason why I thought of using keyword is because I can follow all the keywords that come up in conversation in a database. That way I can always go back and check the detailed description later. I'm pretty familiar with most technical terms, but sometimes keywords that I don't know the definitions for appear. Oh, I see. I selected Gnosis just in case. There is a possibility that I will have to fight them in the future, right? Yeah, just a possibility. Yeah, no. This is this isn't an RPG where you have to fight everything that's ever mentioned ever, just like every other RPG. I agree with you. You probably won't be able to get by evading battles with Gnosis. I can try though. I can try. On top of that, you may be placed in a situation where you have to fight the same type of Gnosis more than once. Exactly. That's why I thought the best thing to do was gather data on them. That is quite important. So we have read this email. Is this going to close out of... Yeah, that closed out of the menu entirely, so... I am going to take this opportunity to look at the database. I think I have decided that I'm going to at least look at everything in the database, and I'll give you the opportunity to read it. If I think it's important, then I will read it. Here we go. Database! Uh, do we have anything in Gnosis? Uh, we have the drones that we bought. Uh, drone G1 and stuff. Drone G2. Drone G3. I don't think there's really that much information on it. Um, yeah, I can turn the menu off. Uh, but we don't have any analysis info, which is really what you want. The reason that we don't have those is because these were theoretical drones that we had fought. Uh, let's take a look at the keywords, though. We do have... 
Are they gonna label it? I hope they do. There we go. Anti-Gnosis weapon system. So those uh, giant mech robots are specifically designed to take out the Gnosis. Uh, not, yeah, not all of the eggs come in humanoid forms. Uh, but that, that, that's what it always looks like to me. Uh, they weigh the same as a large car, I guess you could say. Ah, so here, here's something that I find interesting. The primary power source called the transmit generator does not contain any fuel or energy conversion device. All energy is transmitted directly to these generators from the mothership or base station. Thus, the, st the term generator is not appropriate for these systems. Similarly, the propellants used by the eggs for locomotion are also continuously provided by the mothership or base so eggs can in effect run indefinitely as long as they remain within the area of influence in other words they don't have any fuel or anything all the energy that they consume is being transmitted to them from a centralized station very very nice alan what is up? He's 24 years old. He was born in TC4743, whatever TC means. I haven't really gone over that. He works in the first R&D division. Um, should you be interested in his backstory? He's two years older than Xion. Alan is her junior by one year in the corporate hierarchy of Vector. He comes from a wealthy family, but he doesn't talk to anybody about it. He loves fishing. I doubt that comes into play anytime soon. Android. Artificial humanoid life form. Uh, life form, not firm. Um, yeah, the first recognized term. That, see, this is this is nice. They actually give you real information, and then they kind of go off on a tangent about the sci-fi stuff. But look, first time that they they used the term android was in a novel by Villiers de Lille Adam uh, called Tomorrow's Eve to describe an artificial woman. And that was a reference. One of the lines in Xeno Saga it is hard to believe they're making an android in this day and age. Uh, is a reference to the first time that they actually used the term android. The, the game is full of, of little things like that that I, I discover every time that I play the game. So that is it for this. If you want to read the rest, I apologize that I probably went a little bit fast. Uh, cage partition, I don't think this is important. Um, yeah, that, that's. I'm sure they'll add more information to that later. Uh, we can learn a little bit about the captain. He's 40. He's yeah, he's the captain of this ship, the Will Glinde. Uh, yeah, he's he's a pretty nice guy. Uh, Commander Andrew Cherenkov, second in command of the battlecruiser Will Glinde. There's more to this man than meets the eye. Uh, we saw a little bit of Cherenkov. He was the one in the bridge. That that was trying. That was very serious, but not the captain. Commercial model. There's a lot of stuff on the commercial model. As you can see, this database can get quite uh, full quite quickly. But as you saw, it's still pretty empty. Uh, luckily, they are filling it as we go along. Um, yeah, commercial models. Not Cosmos. <laughs> Connection gear uh, is a PDA. Obviously, this, this terminology is pretty old. Best thought of as an advanced version of a PC or a wireless phone. I like that they put that at the end, even though, to be honest, my, uh, my iPhone probably could do better than that. Yeah, I have an iPhone. You know what I'm say? So does everybody else in the family. So I had to get one, too. I'm sure there are other brands that are better. <laughs> but that's the one I got. Um... Not, not much about this. That that seems that interesting to be honest with you about the counselors for the reality's direct approach. Uh, disengaging the VR two thousand. Oh, this is about the uh, the encephalon. This is how we um, yeah direct approach is also known as diving. That's how she entered the encephalon. DME addiction, an addiction which results from the consumption of reality and body tissue. This is why going over the database is important. So when uh, when Xion called Virgil a DME addict, she accused him of eating Realian flesh. The blood vessels carry the ingested tissue mainly from the central nervous system to the brain. So uh, you eat their brain primarily to, to put stuff into your brain. 
uh, which results in neural structural change changes. The physical and mental states are then altered, but occasionally the results in this results in death when an allergic reaction occurs. So you can be allergic to being somewhat of a cannibal. Once the brain has undergone the alteration, the addict must continue to consume new realian tissue to avoid withdrawal symptoms, thus necessitating a drug-dependent intervention. There is as of yet no complete cure since the consumed realian tissue grows and mutates along, along with the host's neural network, so it becomes a part of your brain and won't go away. In some corners of the galaxy beyond the reaches of the Federation's control, there is an active black market for realian tissue as a new form of recreational narcotics. The external symptoms of this addiction, addiction include hardening and cornification of the skin. So what was going on with Virgil's face uh, was most likely a DME addiction. Uh, that's why she noticed it. Uh, so there you go. Database is definitely important. Dummy protocol. Uh, that's what. That's Cosmos's. Um, I guess you could say her. Like her output. I don't know how to put it. <laughs> um, right. It's only used when she's shut down, so that she can be monitored. I guess. Emergency override code. Uh, used to control a reality's emotions or the actions that result from them. In other words, uh, it says here, from the connection gear, we can put in a, the, the vector employees, I guess. Uh, yeah, vector's third R&D division um, can, can put in the code in an emergency situation to override the realian's thought processes, should that be necessary. Encephalon, the word for brain in the Greek language. Uh, the, I like how they put it this way. The in-game reference is to the simulated environment built within Cosmos' main network. So they do clarify the difference between what is real and what is in the game. Ether, short for a special theory of rudimentary. Or rudimentary. A generic term to denote various types of special powers and encompasses everything from paranormal abilities to medical treatments using nanomachines. There are definitely nanomachines in this game. As well as the ability to control spatial dimensions using transverse technology. And then they give away some of the characters' names, which is not cool. It's not cool. So I'm not even going to say it out loud. In real life, Ether is a hypothetical medium which with special light conductive characteristics which is believed to fill air and space. Uh, I wouldn't say it's hypothetical uh, anymore. I would say that it is has been proven false, although that you could say that the Higgs boson is in the ether. I guess that's an argument that you could make, but most people would not make that. Uh, gate jump. This is uh, the act of entering hyperspace. Uh, gate jump is also known as a warp in. Uh, so that's how they go into warp speed. And then gate out is when they exit hyperspace back into normal uh, speed. Known as a warp out. Galaxy Federation government. Half a million planets. Each planetary system maintains autonomous role within the framework of Federation law. Uh, its planetary capital is known as Fifth Jerusalem. So you wonder what happened to the first four. Uh, you notice that it's not Earth. And you also notice that we don't have very many aliens walking around here. Huh. Interconnection is mutual interaction. The endgame reference is to the act of establishing a non-local connection using the VR2000. Uh, it uses the EP, utilizes the EPR paradox, which constitutes the heart of the UMN. Uh, this is a justification that I feel is, is the worst in the game, the, the EPR paradox justifying the UMN, but we'll, we'll go over that when we get there. Uh, this method frees data transference from the limitations of physics, allowing an instantaneous exchange of data across distances millions of light years apart. Like I said, this is the, the, the justification, the scientific justification that I call most bullshit on in this game, uh, but we'll go into that once they try to explain it in more detail. Kindling! Kindling? Oh. A permanent acceleration of certain neural connections or the opening of entirely new neural paths. So this is what they were talking about with Cosmos when she was like remapping her mind in the encephalon. 
Cosmos! Holy crap, we got a lot of information of, about Cosmos. She is comprised entirely of mechanical parts, a rarity in an age of advanced reality and technology. That is why she is considered an android and different from the realians. She is made entirely of mechanical parts. The basic tenet to which she adheres to is based on logic, probability, and completion of her mission above all else. She also unconditionally protects Xion, her creator, even though we have not seen any evidence of that just yet. I don't remember Cosmos guarding Xion in battle or anything like that. Uh, she's equipped with a simulated personality operating system to aid in communication, but it fails often. Um, it, her tendency to put logic and probability first makes her quite difficult to manage at times. Uh, the name Cosmos is a general acronym to denote an anti-gnosis tactical system. It stands for Cosmos Obey Strategic Multiple Operation Systems. I don't understand how Cosmos can be an abbreviation for something that has the word Cosmos er, Cosmos? I guess it could be Cosmos, but that would be with a C, I would think. Unless Cosmos with a, Cosmos with a K is, is Greek. Could be. Uh, main equipment, they don't really have anything here, um, her, her, but the second division is what gives Cosmos her stuff. Like Turkana from the original, uh, the opening full motion video. It is a real lake at the northern tip of Kenya. It's also known as Lake Rudolph, and they have found many human fossils there. So it is, it is deemed that, mm, I don't know, I, I guess they're implying that whatever was found there was, was older than us uh, as humans. I guess that's the implication of Lake Turkana uh, and, and why they have chosen it. 